Please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends so more people can see it. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and my friends, I've been waiting for you. And today we're going to return to our series, which is called The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. And today we're going to find out that God's will brings divine provision. Wow, this is really important. But I'd like for you to order the entire series, which is called The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. My friends, it's not enough to know the will of God. You've got to do it. You've got to be in it. And when you're in the will of God and you're doing the will of God, that really is the key to your success. And this entire series is about how to walk from where you are into the will of God, which can be a process. But I believe this series will help you get through the process a lot quicker because power is waiting for you, provisions waiting for you, protections waiting for you. All of those things are activated when you're right smack in the middle of the will of God. But this is a 15 part series and it comes in all kinds of formats and it comes with a study guide. And my friends, I just love these study guides. First of all, because I put a lot of work into these notes. I do it because I want you to see the information while you're hearing or seeing the programs because I really believe that when you see it, you hear it and you read it all at the same time, it causes this information to become firm inside you. And this study guide is loaded. It has all the Greek words, all the definitions. It has all the points, the principles, questions for you to consider at the end of every program. It is just wonderful. And we're also offering you right now my book by the same title. If you don't have yours yet, please order yours today. And it's called The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. The back of the book says... Are you ready for a life filled with adventure? That's what happens when you begin to do the will of God. You leave the monotonous routine and your life becomes really exciting when you say yes to the will of God and you begin to do it. But you can order all these things by going online or by giving us a call. And please, when you reach out to us, let us know how to pray for you. We will really pray for you. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me, I'll hear you, I'll answer you, and I'll show you great and mighty things. And if you'll call us or send us an email, we will really pray with you. God, according to his word, will hear us, he will respond to us, and he'll do something great and mighty for you. So please let us know how to pray. We're waiting for the phone to ring right now or for your email to show up in our inbox. But I'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Today, we're going to talk about the fact that when you're in God's will, divine provision comes to you. That is amazing. You know, when you're doing your own thing, you got to pay the bills by yourself. But when you're doing the will of God, God pays the bills. And that's what I'm going to show you today. But before we get into the teaching, I want to tell you about something I just love in our ministry, and that is water baptism. In the Great Commission, we're told to go into all the world and to teach and to preach to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. But water baptism in the Western church today is not emphasized like it once was. But my friends, water baptism is important because it is the first important step of obedience after a person comes to Christ. And in our Moscow ministry, baptizing new believers is a big deal. And at multiple events every year, we baptize multiple people. We set aside an entire day. We baptize and baptize and baptize and baptize. People go into the baptistry. They come out of the baptistry as the next person comes in and comes out and the next person comes in and comes out. And the next day in church, we always say, yesterday we had a lot of funerals and a lot of resurrections. Because when you baptize people, you're burying the old man and raising the new man to walk in newness of life. So we always say, yesterday we had a lot of funerals and we had a lot of resurrections. And that is what water baptism is. And it is just so exciting to see people who get saved walk into those baptismal waters and come out in such power 
Wow. And if you're a partner, you are a part of that exciting event. And I want to say thank you for being a partner with our ministry. And if you're not already a partner, please pray about joining us as a partner. A partner is someone who prays for us and who financially gives to our ministry to help us do what we're doing. We can't do it without our partners. They are so very important to us. And partners, again, thank you for what you do. And if you would please pray about becoming a partner, we would welcome you into our partner family and immediately send you two books as our way of saying welcome to the partner family. We're going to send you my book, which is called Life in the Combat Zone, and my wife's book, which is called The Gift of Forgiveness. We believe these two books are so important that we want every partner to have these two books. But you can, begin, you can become a partner right now by calling us. Just call the number on the screen, or you can just go to our website, and there on the website, you'll see how you can become a partner with our ministry, and we will embrace you, we will pray for you, and welcome you to our partner family. Thank you. But hey, reach for your Bible. We always use the Bible in this program. And today we're going to talk about the fact that God's will brings divine provision. And in the last program, we gloriously saw that when Paul showed up in Corinth and finally focused on Gentile ministry, God's power showed up and showed off. And really it was while he was in Corinth that he really aligned himself with the fact that he was called to be the apostle to the Gentiles. And Paul wrote about this in Romans 11, verse 13, when he said, For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles. And then he added these words, I magnify mine office, which means Paul no longer shunned his ministry to the Gentiles, but he embraced it and even magnified it and pursued it passionately. He finally got in the right place. He was finally doing the right thing, and the power of God showed up and showed off. And Paul writes about this display of power in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4, where he describes a demonstration of the Spirit and power which manifested when he first came to preach to the Corinthians, a Gentile audience. And that word demonstration is a Greek word which means to point at something, to draw attention to a thing, to point at an object, to show off, to demonstrate, or to display. There was literally an eruptive display of the power of God when he began to preach to the Corinthians. Now, it's amazing that when you read the book of Acts and you come to Acts chapter 18, which really describes Paul's ministry to the Corinthians, in Acts chapter 18, there is no depiction of that eruption of power. It is not described or spoken of in Acts chapter 18. But now when Paul writes about his experience in Corinth, he tells about it. And he says, wow, when I begin to preach to you guys, when I finally got into alignment with God's primary purpose for my life, which is to be the apostle to the Gentiles, God's power showed up, God's power showed off. And my friends, the results were dramatic. People begin to come to Christ and Paul began to see success in the ministry because he didn't just know the will of God. Finally, he was in the will of God. He was doing the will of God. And the same thing will happen to you when you're in the place God has called you to and when you're doing what God has called you to do. In those first five years, Paul knew he was called to be the apostle to the Gentiles but he had a hard time getting into alignment with that call. It was a process for him. And my friends, I want you to hurry up the process. Just get through all your struggles. Finally embrace what God's called you to do. Because when you get in the right place and you do what you're called to do, God's power will show up and it will show off in your life too. There will be a divine flow of power greater than anything you've ever experienced in your life when you're in the place where you're supposed to be. But initially, in the first five years of Paul's ministry, before he came to Corinth, he had to work to pay his own bills. That's very interesting. He had to work to pay his own bills. There is no evidence in the book of Acts that in the first five years of his ministry, he received any kind of financial support. If he received it, there is no record of it in the book of Acts. He even wrote about this in Philippians chapter 4, verse 15. But to cover his own personal needs and the needs of the ministry, Paul had to work on the side while he ministered. But when he arrived in Corinth 
And when he focused on the Gentiles, suddenly money showed up. God's will brings divine provision. And we read about this in Acts chapter 8, verse 3, where we find that Paul first, when he came to Corinth, and in the five years before he came to Corinth, had a job on the side. But then when he focused on the Gentile ministry, money showed up. But let's go back to Acts chapter 18, verse 3, where the Bible says, And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them, talking about Aquila and Priscilla, and wrought or worked. For by occupation, they were tent makers. Well, the word tent makers can describe those who make tents, but it's unlikely that it should be translated tent maker. A better translation would be a leather worker. And the reason it is improbable that they were tent makers is because the looms required for making tents were enormous, and it would have been impossible for Paul to travel and carry those massive, massive looms with him. However, he could have carried a bag of instruments, and as a leather worker, he could have made things such as cloaks, curtains, shoes, or any products which were made from leather. And it is likely that in the first five years of his ministry, he carried that bag, and to pay his bills and to cover his own expenses in the ministry, he pulled his bag out, and he began to fix practical things like cloaks, curtains, shoes, or any products made of leather. But in the first five years, he paid his own bills. There wasn't really any money to do the ministry. At least there's no evidence of it in the book of Acts or in Paul's later writings. Wow, very interesting because those five years were the same years when he reversed God's divine order in his life. Rather than go to the Gentile first, we've already seen that from city to city, he was going to synagogue, to synagogue, to synagogue, to synagogue, and he was reaching the Gentiles last. And in fact, the Gentiles just kind of overheard what he was trying to say to the Jews. And it was during those years when he was trying and trying and trying to go to the Jews, and he was just beating his head against a wall because the Jews didn't want to hear him. It was during those five years he had to pay his own bills, pay his own way, and no money showed up. But when you come to 2 Corinthians 11, verse 9, we find that when he was ministering to the Corinthians and when he was focused on the Gentiles, finally in the right place, doing the right thing, money showed up. And money didn't just show up, big money showed up. Look what he writes in 2 Corinthians 11, 9. For that which was lacking to me, the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied. And that word supplied describes a marvelous supply of abundance. It wasn't just a little dribbly offering. It was a magnificent supply which suddenly showed up. So once Paul got into agreement with God's divine order for his life, which was to reach the Gentile first, financial provision began to flow in his direction. And the first offering he received was huge. It was a sacrificial gift. But then something very peculiar happened in Corinth, and we read about it in Acts chapter 18, verse 5, which says, And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. It looks like he suddenly redirected his ministry back to the Jew again. Here he was preaching to the Gentile, having success, the power of God showed up. But then when Silas and Timothy came and met him, in some way, Paul felt pressed in the spirit. That's what the King James Version says. However, when you read the most ancient texts of Acts 18, verse 5, the words in the spirit do not appear. It simply says Paul was pressed. And this word pressed, the Greek word suneko, means to be compelled or to be pressured, and it carries the idea of undue pressure. So Acts 18, verse 5 could be translated, Paul was suddenly compelled to reconvene his ministry to the Jews. Or you could translate it, Paul was suddenly pressured to testify to the Jews about Jesus as Lord. Paul did not feel this pressure when he was alone. He didn't feel this pressure when he was in Athens. He didn't feel this pressure when he was in Corinth, just with Aquila and Priscilla. He only felt this pressure when Silas and Timothy showed up, and when they showed up, the pressure also showed up. And it seems that when these two men came to rejoin him in Corinth, they were stunned. Paul, what are you doing all these five years? 
You've had it on your heart to reach the Jew. What are you doing now? You're focusing on Gentiles? What has happened to you? Have you forgotten that you are a Jew and the Jews are God's covenant people? We've got to go to the Jew first. What are you doing? And they pressured him to refocus into the ministry and come back to his old style, which was not very successful. And for a very brief period, Paul again began to testify to the Jew. And again, the Greek means he was suddenly compelled or he was suddenly pressured, and it was the pressure of his friends who showed up. It was not the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had gloriously redirected him, and he was finally preaching to the Gentiles, but when his friends showed up, he felt their pressure and their coercion, and once again he said, all right, I'm going to go back to the Jews, and he began to preach to the Jews again, but he didn't give in to the pressure very long. Because when we come to Acts 18, 5, it says he did testify to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. However, once again, they did not want to hear what he had to say. The Jews were not his primary anointing. And that's why Acts 18, 6 says, and when they, that's the Jews, opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean from henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. This was a pivotal moment in his life when he basically said, I am done with you. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm innocent of your blood. I'm refocusing. And from this point onward, my primary focus is going to be the Gentiles. And this is when he finally got the divine order correct in his life. He remembered that decision that he made when he was walking the 50 miles from Athens to Corinth, resolving in his heart that he was going to refocus his ministry. When he got to Corinth, he did that for a time. And then Silas and Timothy showed up, and he was compelled or put under pressure to redirect back to the Jews. But when the Jews said, we don't want anything to do with this, he said, that's fine, I'm done, I'm clean of your blood. From now on, I'm redirecting. I'm finally going to focus completely on the Gentiles. And that's what he did. And my friends, when he began to focus on the Gentiles, his bivocational days came to an end. He no longer had to work a job while he did his ministry because when he got in the will of God, divine provision showed up. And my friends, when you're doing what God has asked you to do, God pays your bills. If you're doing what you want to do, you're going to have to pay the bill by yourself. But when you finally realign and you get in the place where God wants you to be and you're doing what God has asked you to do, God steps forward and God says, now I'm going to pay your bills. And that is when divine provision showed up in the life of Paul. And I want to tell you that if you will get in the place where God wants you to be, and if you'll do what God has asked you to do, he will gloriously supply your need as well. He really, really will. It doesn't mean that you're never going to face a financial challenge because there's always the devil who tries to hijack us. But if you'll stay in the will of God and if you'll stay in faith, God will pay your bills when you're in his will. Say amen. We read in Isaiah 119 that if you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. And my friends, the good of the land belongs to those that are willing and obedient. And if you will align yourself with what God has told you to do, and if you'll stay in that place and you'll do what he's asked you to do, if you'll be who he's asked you to be, God will step forward and he will marvelously supply everything you need to do the job. Now, if we are ever facing a financial dilemma in our ministry, of course, we do spiritual warfare. We deal with the enemy. We also check our giving. We're very solid givers, but we look to see if we have failed any way in our giving because we believe giving brings a harvest. But there's one more thing I do. I look to examine, am I doing exactly what God has told me to do? Have I veered from the call? Because when you're in the call and you're doing what God has called you to do, divine provision comes. And I'm telling you, friends, if you're facing hard times, you deal with the enemy. You make sure that you're giving, but you also examine to see, are you really where you're supposed to be? Are you doing what you're supposed to do? Because when you're in the will of God, divine provision shows up. It really does. And there's something else that shows up. 
divine connections. And I'm going to be showing you this in tomorrow's program, which is really going to be good. God will bring you the friends and God will bring you the people you need to do the job when you're in the right place. Don't miss tomorrow. It is going to be so good. But I've got something else to share with you. And then I'll be back to pray for you. Someone asked the question, did transgenderism exist in New Testament times? Well, Ecclesiastes says there's nothing new under the sun, so let's see what we can find from history. In the ancient city of Smyrna, there was the cult of Sybil. There was a church in Smyrna, but in the city of Smyrna, there was the cult of Sybil, and the cult of Sybil had a lot of priestess who served this pagan cult. But the only way you could qualify to be a priestess in the cult of Sybil is if you began life as a man. And men had their male genitalia removed and they transitioned to become women so they could qualify to be priestess in the pagan, dark, perverted cult of Sybil. Wow. And in fact, ancient writers said that the priestess in the cult of Sybil were beautiful women, but the truth is they were just men who had had their male genitalia removed. I find this encouraging because it means even the early church had to deal with a lot of nonsense, and if they could deal with it successfully, so can we. Do you hunger to know what God wants to do with your life or what steps to take to fulfill the perfect will of God? Or maybe you need an answer from heaven for a life-changing decision. You can learn to hear from heaven to know God's plan today with Rick Renner's updated teaching series, The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. Rick answers the hard questions about the often misunderstood subject of hearing God's voice and how you can know His will for your life. He shares from his own life how he discovered the will of God and the bumps he encountered along the way. Titles in this series include Coming to Grips with the Call of God for Your Life, Being in the Right Place at the Right Time, Don't Misinterpret What God Told You, Redirecting and Getting Back on Course. This 15-part series is available in digital or physical formats starting at just $24. We're also offering Rick's book by the same name, The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. Rick delves into the journey of the Apostle Paul and other key Bible characters as they sought to walk out God's will for their lives. Along the way in this fascinating process, Rick will reveal vital lessons to help you in your own pursuit to fully align with God's will for your life, which is the key to your lasting success. This book can be yours for only $19. Bundle the series and the book, The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. Don't miss this special offer. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner and guess where I am? I'm seated in the foyer of the Tulsa Ministry Headquarters, and I love this foyer. First of all, when you come in here, immediately you feel excellence. We wanted it to be beautiful, but we didn't spend a lot of money to do it because we're very careful with the funds that we receive. But the reason I love this foyer is because of what's on the walls. And on the wall, behind the camera, and right over here, there are big displays of letters which we received from Russian viewers in the early years when we were getting so much mail, we stopped counting the mail by the pieces and started counting the mail by the tons. I am not exaggerating when I tell you that we received between 80 and 100 tons of mail from people that were reaching out to us. And we answered every single letter. And you know, to answer every letter, you gotta pay for stationery, you gotta pay for envelopes, you got to pay for stamps. People don't think about what it costs to answer that kind of mail. But my friends, it was a massive amount of money just to respond to that mail. But we did it because of our partners. And now from this facility, we've taken ministry to the next level. We're not just reaching Russia. We're reaching around the planet with television and all kinds of media. And this office in Tulsa responds to people that are reaching out to us from around the world. And because we have this facility, we're able to do this professionally and excellently. And I wanna say thank you for helping us to purchase this facility. You know, several years ago, we started the ministry expansion project. That included paying off this facility and building the new Moscow studio, which was a very big deal. That's finished, that's paid for. 
and now we're paying off this facility. And my friends, we have already knocked out more than half of the ministry expansion project and now we want to completely finish it so we can stop talking about it and so we can direct our attention fully to taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. And if you're not already a member of our giving team, please pray about being a part of the ministry expansion project. Well, today we have seen that when you're in the will of God, divine provision comes. My friends, if you'll say yes to the will of God, and if you'll really do it, God will surprise you by paying your bills. He'll make sure you have everything you need to do the job that He has commissioned you to do. But I want you to order this entire series, which is called The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. Do you see how important this teaching is? Wow. And this teaching comes with a study guide, and it comes in all kinds of formats. And right now, we're also offering you my book by the same title, which is called The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. And the subtitle says, Positioning Yourself to Live in God's Supernatural Power, Provision, and Protection. And the reason I say positioning yourself is because this is a decision you have to make. You have to position yourself in the will of God. You have to make a choice to go there, to be there, to do what God's asked you to do. And God will do His part to make sure His power, His provision, and His protection shows up to help you do the job. But you can order all these things by going online or by giving us a call right now. And please, when you reach out to us, let us know how to pray for you because we are really praying people. If you've ever reached out to us before, you know you don't get away from us without really being prayed for. So let us know how to pray for you by calling us or by going online. But Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would help my precious friend to get in the will of God and that when they're in that place, you would cause divine provision to show up to empower them to do the job. And I pray this in Jesus' wonderful name. Say amen. Well, we're going to be back tomorrow. We're going to continue. But until then, remember Ecclesiastes 8, for where the word of a king is, there is power. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation with us, would you please let us know by going to renner.org forward slash salvation? We would love to connect with you. This program was made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends so more people can see it.